Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Shri Banerjee, core faculty for the College of Health Sciences and Public Policy at Walden University with a joint um, faculty appointment at Ross University School of Medicine. And today I'll be talking about um, a, 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 something that is um, really disturbing um, and and um, it's 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 um, bothersome um, and and that is that um, the um, idea of state sanctioned violence and this is something that um, I've uh, talked uh, somewhat um, with one of my colleagues dr. Axdale um, and um, uh, but trying to understand and pinpoint um, how forced sterilization has occurred um, throughout, um, I would say, the late 1800s um, into um, when it fused with uh, the science or pseudoscience of eugenics, um, with per which perpetuated um, racial disparities even more. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be talking about. Um, there's a lot of uh, different, a lot of slides in here, but I'm going to be talking about um, these various topics and how it interrelates to public health. In fact, um, I, I'll, I'll start by saying this. Um, there were a number of articles that um, stated in the American Journal of Public Health that uh, forced sterilizations were justified as a means to rid society of feeble-minded individuals. So um, for the betterment of um, society, um, there was the need for um, for sterilizations. Um, can't even imagine thinking in those terms, but this is what happened. Um, why is this even being talked about today? Um, some of you might be thinking forced sterilization was back was a practice that was back uh, maybe in the 50s, 60s. No, it has apparently occurred as early um, as 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 recently as um, early September 2020, um, when a whistleblower in Georgia um, uh, actually stated um, um, that in in the uh, w within the immigration and customs. Um, enforcement, the nurse um, actually indicated that within the detention center, there was uh, forced sterilizations going on. Um, there was medical neglect, abuse, involuntary hysterectomies, um, uh, which is a uterus removal surgery. Um, and this was being done on detained immigrant women. Um, can you believe it? It's two years ago, this, this took place. Um, now, I'm going to go into, um, now that we've talked about a current event, I'm going to go into um, providing the difference between coercion and force. So coercion means um, maybe you're giving financial or social incentives or so th that part actually um, you have to make sure, I want to make a note in research that you're not by f providing financial incentives. This can easily happen even without you knowing. Um, and, and this may be um, in, in a way coercive, but um, also intimidation tactics are employed um, to compel an individual to undergo the procedure. Um, forced is when a person does not know she is undergoing the procedure, has no opportunity to even provide consent, and this has happened too, um, or give consent under duress. Um, female reproductive rights and social justice is especially important to take into consideration um, and the privacy and freedom from sexual violence. Um, human right to control our sexuality, our gender, our work, um, and our um, reproduction. Um, these are um, basic rights that we, um, as human beings, um, possess or should possess. Um, again, going into the history a little bit more, and I'm, I'm going to be, um, as I'm giving this presentation, I'm going to be um, jumping back and forth, kind of um, going into history and then explaining uh, a bit more. So uh, just follow um, along with me, um, and I'll, I'll explain what I'm talking about. Um, so the history of forced uh, sterilizations is strongly connected to the field of eugenics. Um, and this is, I'm going to explain about eugenics. I'm starting in the late 19th century. 
Uh, eugenics, uh, um, and I'm going to give you the definition, was born out of nativism and, and the need to create a pure and most perfect race. And we see this in Nazi Germany in World War II. Um, perfect race by only maintaining the best genes. Um, and, and those who decided on eugenics further perpetuated bias and discrimination. Um, what were some of the major um, uh, proponents of forced sterilizations and eugenics um, societies? Uh, American Eugenics Society and the Human Betterment Foundation, which actually had a long history all the way from 1928 through 1942 when most of the country was uh, trying to grapple with the Great Depression, um, uh, which is interesting. Um, so um, the Human um, Betterman Foundation, why even talk about it? Well, guess what? Most famous member was the founder of the Intelligence Quotient Test. The, the Stanford Binet Test of IQ um, a member was part of the Human Betterman Foundation, which was a, a primary e eugenics and pro uh, major proponents of forced sterilization of, of, of individuals that carry feeble-minded genes. As, as in quotes, not not um, um, what I'm saying. Um, so headlines, 1938 um, pamphlet. This is a um, uh, pamphlet which is boasting of 12,000 insane and feeble-minded people have been sterilized. Um, and and so uh, this is talking about um, the sterilization um, as a surgical operation, which prevents parenthood without um, in any way or degree um, unsexing the patient or impairing his or her health. Um, so um, the, these, what, what is alarming is that these individuals uh, did not necessarily make these decisions on their own. Um, and this is something that is in a way selling um, the effects effects of eugenic sterilization now this is different than uh elective sterilization this is forced sterilizations um to to weed out uh uh bad bad genes um and and this is in a way 12 um reasons why this is a good um set of practices um so one um, one effect only, um, it prevents parenthood. Um, it is in no way or degree um, unsexing the patient. Um, it is in no way impairing the health of the patient. Um, it is a protection, not a punishment, therefore carries no stigma or humiliation. Um, parents and their families are among the best friends of sterilization. They know by experience what its uh, protection means to them. Um, so they, they, they were using these um, to try to perpetuate um, some of the um, divisiveness um, within society, but uh, this was not necessarily their intention. The belief was, in fact, um, that they were trying to um, focus on more um, uh, of, of the good genes. Um, uh, some of these uh, co comments are pretty interesting. If persons whose offspring will be um, dysgenic are so um, lacking in intelligence and foresight or in self-control that they do not control themselves, the state must control them. Sterilization is the answer. Um, whether in operations in state institutions or federally funded county hospitals, most of these sterilized um, were the foreign born, the working class and young uh, women deemed unfit to procreate. Um, or um, become parents. Um, this went on for a long time. Um, the guiding principle of forced sterilization, just revisiting that, immun immunizing the, and this is statements, immunizing the hereditary defective against bad genes. Um, in California, at least in the 1950s, compulsory sterilization was consistently described as a public health strategy that could breed out undes undesirable defects from the populace and fortify the state. And this is a map, an um, early geospatial map, um, showing um, uh, actually uh, policies um, uh, and legislation 
um, and the total number of operations of eugenical sterilization. When they're talking about, by the way, eugenical sterilization, this is implying forced sterilization. Um, and if you uh, actually zoom in, then you can see that California was leading the way on, the, on that for a long time. Um, again, forced sterilization on who did, whom did it affect mostly? Poor women, disabled women, and women of color. So this is something that really needs attention. It needs focus. And um, forced sterilizations in California, um, that is something that, that even happened recently. Um, California prisons are set to have authorized sterilizations of nearly 150 female inmates between 2006 and 2010. State paid doctors 147,460 to perform tubal ligations that former inmates say were done under coercion. Um, and this was out of anti-Asian and anti-Mexican sentiment. Um, so w w what is going on here? Um, even today, um, of course, this is in prison inmates. Um, uh, but the, these still are going on um, under coercion, and so uh, federal and state laws. What what are they saying about this? Well, they ban inmate sterilizations um, if federal funds are used, um, and this shows that uh, it, they they may um, feel pressure to comply. Um, but to get around that, what what did they do? They used state funds. So forced sterilization evidence in 2008. Um, this was not stopped until 2010. Um, this was a California prison health care. Um, and in certain circumstances, sterilization um, offered in pregnancy. And you don't do that. Um, and I'm going to explain to you why. Um, unnecessary hysterectomies performed at teaching hospitals in the South. Women of color as practice for medical students. Um, and this was done in Mississippi, uh, known as Mississippi appendectomies. Uh, for sterilization in the early 20th century across the country, uh, medical superintendents, um, legislators, and social reformers affiliated with an emerging eugenics movement joined forces to put sterilization laws on the books. Um, so this is when it became formalized and beca became a part of um, everything else. Um, such legislation was motivated by crude theories of human heredity that posited the wholesale inheritance of traits associated um, with a uh, pan panoply of feared conditions such as criminality, feeble-mindedness, and sexual deviance. Um, many sterilization advocates viewed reproductive surgery as a necessary public health intervention, and I've said this numerous times. Um, but um, this is from this is not based on actual fact, but um, on, on theories that don't have necessary backing. Um, North Carolina sterilizations, these are cumulative sterilizations, but um, as you can see, went up um, through the decades. It started, uh, I believe, in 1933 and then um, went on up. And then more recently, this is um, this actually um, stopped. Um, so evidence um, a forced sterilization on Kimberly Jeffrey. Um, this was an individual who, um, this is chief complaint. These are soap notes, by the way, subjective, objective um, action, uh, subjective, um, objective assessment and plan. Um, th this is the acronym. Um, and um, the patient um, declined to ha have uh, tubal ligation. However, um, uh, the, the the patient um, had this done on her anyway, even though she indicated that she didn't want it. Um, so this is uh, direct evidence um, of forced sterilization. Eugenics, um, what, what was happening in the um, 40s um, and onward in 50s, um, better baby contests, um, uh, fitter families, eugenics, um, records office. Um, so these were all three um, uh, areas of, of um, um, places where um, people were um, trying to promote eugenics. Um, and what the Better Baby contest was, um, in fact, uh, people would gather and uh, bring their babies and uh, judge uh, based on characteristics, uh, emotions, and traits 
uh, which ones were genetically fit. Fitter families went a step beyond them, that and identified different families and weeded out selfishness, jealousy, suspiciousness, high-temperedness, um, cruelty, feeble-mindedness, alcoholism, and even paralysis. Um, these were the ones that were um, to be selected against. Um, so forced sterilization decision under sedation. This is something that is very controversial and has been removed in most places. Um, an individual um, was actually pressured in 2010 um, during a C-section to get a sterilization. Um, uh, she was 43 um, and she was horrified and resisted. Um, Courts decided um, soliciting approval for sterilization during labor is coercive because pain and discomfort can impair a woman's ability to weigh the decision. It is even illegal in a federal prison. Um, so this shouldn't have happened. But um, now, you know, going back to um, history again, um, Nixon administration dramatically increased uh, Medicaid funded uh, sterilization. Um, so more recently, um, this is what led to um, uh, uh, increased um, sterilization, um, forced sterilization. Um, and of course, low income Americans uh, targeting uh, people of color and those later on with HIV AIDS, which of course started in the 80s. Um, in Virginia, inmates sterilized um, were disproportionately people of color. Um, Medicaid and forced um, sterilization, the main targets of these programs were women who were mentally retarded or otherwise considered feeble-minded. Um, and it was actually performed using laparotomy, um, which, was, uh, which left a, a quite a big scar um, and had a risk of morbidity and mortality. Um, and in the 60s, 70s, um, of course, uh, less invasive um, laparoscopic techniques uh, replaced that. Um, and, and, but, but when these forced sterilizations were taking place, um, they were actually uh, uh, pretty unsafe, um, if, you, if you think about it. Um, 1978 guidelines, since that's when these regulations got stricter. Uh, women currently requesting publicly funded sterilization must complete the uh, consent to sterilization. I'm going to show you what that is. Stricter guidelines to prevent forced sterilization practices. Research guidelines were created in order to protect vulnerable populations. So here is a uh, forced sterilization consent, uh, excuse me, um, a sterilization consent form now that is being um, signed um, before it can get to um, the individual um, going through the procedure um, and the person must be of sound mind not under um, sedation or anesthesia um, here's another court case um, which um, acknowledge uh, Mexican origin uh, women who are coerced sterilization following c-section uh, this uh, occurred for, for seven years in California um, led the country in the number of sterilizations there um, in uh, uh, in state institutions, 20,000 sterilizations took place. Um, one third of the total number performed in 32 states. I mean, this was legal. Um, for sterilization history in Puerto Rico, um, it was actually found that um, this was implemented to control overpopulation. This was the idea. Um, and one third of all women who had children um, and in, in, in a population group had been sterilized. Um, so the idea is that um, sterilization among women of childbearing age in uh, Puerto Rico was more than 10 times than women living in the US. Um, and this was legalized in 1937. Um, Buck versus Bell, um, it is better for the world if instead of waiting to execute degenerate offspring for crime or to let them starve for their imbecility, society can prevent those who are manifestly unfit from continuing their kind. And this was uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes, uh, one of the uh, Supreme Court justices, um, giving this opinion. 
uh, the principle that sustains uh, compulsory vaccination is broad enough to cover uh, cutting the fallopian tubes. Uh, this was the thinking at the time um, as a public health intervention. Um, and he further, furthermore stated, um, Oliver Wendell Holmes, that three generates of imbecile, imbeciles are enough. How did Native Americans get affected from forced um, sterilization? Um, estimated 40% of Native American women um, underwent this. 10% of Native American men underwent um, sterilization. And uh, uh, many of them, uh, uh, th these were forced, forced sterilizations. Um, the Indian Health Service was part of this for 40 years um, in Arizona, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and South Dakota. Uh, and people of color in 1970, 43% of the women sterilized in federally financed family planning programs um, uh, in the USA. Um, although they only represented uh, one third of the patient population. Um, uh, two black sisters um, in Montgomery, Alabama uh, claimed um, that, or stated, um, that uh, their um, illiterate mother was receiving uh, welfare benefits and had signed an X for her name on medical uh, Medicaid uh, medical forms um, for permission to administer shots to prevent uh, pregnancy, um, and instead they were sterilized. Um, and and so th these types of stories um, of sterilization um, and forced sterilization um, repeatedly occur. Um, so this is just to sum up everything um, and uh, more incidents um, in different places, but um, uh, three examples are um, just merely the tip of the iceberg here. There are um, in different cities um, records verified by Indian Health Service, 3,406 uh, sterilizations. Um, and so um, and and th this was from um, a, a place talking about um, some of these connections. Um, and, and also individual stories um, where um, a Native American woman underwent a total hysterectomy um, for unconvincing um, indications. Um, there's, here, here's the bottom line, um, eugenic birth control um, had been resuscitated in the 1970s through voluntary physician um, with an immoral national eugenic policy. Um, so th this had policy backing, unfortunately, but um, upon nebulous grounds. And um, what allowed this to happen was um, th the idea of forced sterilizations um, continued um, throughout the 20th century. Um, and actually into the 21st century, um, even among immigrants. Um, so uh, th 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 the effect um, of the impact of this um, within communities and um, what needs to be done as interventions to ensure that um, uh, we're uh, still maintaining um, low infant mortality um, and, and some of these um, factors um, that are um, in, in connection uh, with forced sterilizations. Um, but um, more importantly, it is, um, imp it, it, it's imperative that, that we understand um, that policies that are um, connected to uh, and undergirded by um, an, uh, a nebulous foundation um, uh, eventually um, might perpetuate um, some of the biases and some of the uh, disparities um, that exist within society. Um, uh, th 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 these are um, some of the, some of my um, closing thoughts. Thank you for listening.